it's time to take a closer look at the agent edit node. We've already used it a couple of times, but you probably don't really know how or when to use it. This is my agent Steve. He has a walk clip where he is holding a rifle, but he needs the actual rifle. So I created a new layer with an M1 Garand rifle and another layer with a different rifle, a sniper rifle. Then I used an agent prep node to configure the foot locking. And finally, I've connected an agent edit node as a branch coming out of the main chain. Okay, the first parameter we have in the agent edit node is the set current layer. What is the current layer? The current layer is the layer being displayed by our agent at this moment. Our agent may have one, two, three layers, but there will always be one particular layer being displayed. That one layer being displayed is the current layer. When we create an agent with the agent node, Houdini automatically creates a layer called default, with all the geometry our character has. From that moment on, the default layer layer is the current layer, the layer being displayed by our agent. Now what happens when we create a new layer with the agent layer node? Go to the agent layer and you'll see that the set as current layer option is turned on. With this option turned on, we are telling Houdini that this new layer we've created, the M1 layer, my agent with the M1 rifle, will be from now on the current layer. Move on to the next node and you'll see exactly the same thing. This layer is also set as current layer. If I now display the agent prep node, my agent will be displaying the sniper layer, the one set as current layer. Turn off this box and now the current layer, the layer being displayed, will be the previous one, the M1 layer. And if I turn off this one, then the current layer will be the default layer, which was set as current layer in the agent node. All right, let me turn these two layers back on. This way, the layer being displayed will be the latest in the chain. Great, so one of the things we can do with the agent edit node is change the current layer. If my agent's current layer is the one with the sniper rifle, but I want him to have the M1 Garand rifle, I'll activate the set current layer parameter and I would choose from this list the M1 layer or whatever layer you want to display. Another thing we can do with the agent edit node is change the agent's collision layer. In addition to the default layer, the agent node also generates a layer called collision that we use to calculate collisions in a ragdoll simulation. By default, that collision layer is set as the agent's collision layer. But say you want to use a different layer as collision layer. You would activate this set collision layer parameter, open the list and choose one of this, but in most cases you won't really need to change anything here. In the next section we have the clip settings. With the set current clip I can change the clip being played by my agent. This is exactly the same we have in the agent clip node, in the clip preview. We use this to make our agent play a certain clip. So, if you want to quickly test your clips or just to change your agent's current clip, you'll do that with this parameter. In my case, I only have two clips, the typos and a walk clip with the rifle. And these two parameters, clip time and clip index, we'll skip them for now. In the third section, there are two parameters, adjust transforms and adjust channels. The one we'll be using the most is the first one, the adjust transforms. In addition to setting the current layer and clips, the agent edit node can also be used to modify the agent's rig or skeleton. Make sure to select the node, place the pointer in the viewport and press enter to enter the edit mode. A lot of blue points will appear all over your agent. Press W to switch to wireframe mode. 
load. And you'll see that these blue points are actually the joints of the rig. I'm going to click on one of them, for example the right knee, and you'll see some controllers appear in the viewport and the new adjust transform in the parameters window. I can now use these controllers in the viewport to rotate that joint, <laughs> as if he was kicking a ball or something. I can also do it by manually adjusting the parameters. This is very useful to do some quick fixes in the agent's pose. If there is some weird intersection or you just want to readjust a part of the body, this will help you. For example, my agent's right thumb is intersecting with the rifle. What I can do here is activate the points on those joints, the thumb and the phalanx, and rotate them until the thumb is well placed on the rifle. Now it looks way better than before. Keep in mind that any change you make will be added on top of the clip the agent is playing. For example, let me activate this point of the lower spine so I can rotate the trunk of my agent to the left. Now when I press play, the agent will still play his current clip but will add on top of that clip this rotation of the trunk. You must be careful with this because if you go too far with the rotations, the mesh of your character will probably break, as you see here, and it won't look good in the render. The agent edit node is not really used here in the agent setup, but later, once we've done the simulation, cached the files and all that stuff, then we use the agent edit to make some adjustments to specific agents. I've already been through all the process, I prepared a simple simulation, it's already cached, just a group of soldiers walking forward with rifles. Something simple to show you how to use the agent edit node. By the way, I'm going to set the viewport to show all objects so you can see the terrain. Okay, as we always say, variation is the key to a realistic crowd simulation. But this one looks very uniform. All the agents are doing exactly the same thing moving forward and looking ahead. Here is where the agent edit node comes in handy. I'm going to make this soldier, the first one, turn his head to both sides at some point. For that, let me create an agent edit node and connect it right after the cache. Display it and now to edit a specific agent, because if I leave it as it is, every change I make in the agent edit will be applied to all the agents. For example, let's change the current layer to the sniper one. Now all my agents are holding a sniper rifle, the default one. All my agents will be displaying the default layer. But that's not what I want. I want to edit only one of them. Go to the group parameter at the top and click on this arrow. Move around in the viewport and you'll see the agents become blue when the pointer is on them. I'm now in the select mode, so I can select in the viewport the agent I want to edit. Select an agent, you'll see it turns orange or yellow, and once selected, press the enter key. In the group parameter there is a number now, 1. If we activate this button on the right side of the viewport with a point and 1, 2, we'll see some numbers appear under each agent. Let me hide the terrain so we can better see those numbers. This one I selected before is the agent number one, and that's exactly the number we see in the group parameter. Now, having put this one in the group parameter, any changes made with the agent edit node will be applied only to the agent number one. Let me change again the current layer. Now these changes are only applied to that specific agent. 
Awesome! Place the pointer in the viewport and press Enter to enter the edit mode. This blue point will appear again. Go to the first frame and now what we are going to do is move forward to frame 24 and activate the blue point on the neck. In the parameters window, hold the Alt key and click on the rotate parameter to set a keyframe. The parameter will turn green. We are going to animate the agent's head. So move on to frame 48, select the neck joint and use these controllers to rotate the head to the left. Hold Alt and click on the parameter again to set a new keyframe. There you go, our agent is now turning his head to the left. Good, let's move forward a few more frames to frame 72 and I want the head to stay the same, looking to the left. So I'll set a new keyframe. Move on to frame 120, for example, and here I want my agent to look to the right. So I rotate this joint to the right and then set one more keyframe. Now the last one, let's go to frame 140. Set all the rotations values to zero and keyframe. My agent's head should now be animated. Go back to the first frame, press escape to exit the edit mode and play to see how it looks. My soldier looks to the left, after a few frames looks to the right and eventually goes back to its initial position.